As determined by the vote taken on our community feed, this video will cover the mighty Byzantine Empire, the eastern continuation of the Roman Empire with its capital of Constantinople. As we will discuss in this video, the Byzantines really did not see themselves as the Byzantines, but rather simply as the Romans. While the Pope as religious head had remained in the old capital of Rome, the political power of the empire had gradually shifted towards Constantinople in the last centuries of classical antiquity, so it was logical for the rulers in Constantinople to see themselves as the continuation of the Roman emperors. However, in the High Middle Ages, the Byzantine Empire increasingly struggled to stand their ground against the Muslims in the East and Catholic Europe in the West. So the Empire is in a difficult yet fascinating position in Crusader Kings' 1066 start. Considering that, it is a tad disappointing that there are unfortunately some issues with the game's portrayal of the historic Eastern Roman Empire. Paradox has already hinted at a Byzantine expansion, as seen in the screenshot promising not a flavour pack, but a full expansion. So in this video we want to give our assessment of how well the Byzantine Empire is portrayed in CK3 from a historical perspective. Perhaps some of the flaws we have detected about the Empire's portrayal will be fixed in the course of a future expansion. If you like our content, you might want to consider liking and subscribing to our channel. And if you want to enable us to reduce our real life jobs to part time, to produce more content more regularly, you might want to support us via our Patreon. Also, please tell us in the comments what other regions of CK3 you'd like to see covered. We really enjoyed digging out information about the Byzantines, and we are always happy about your suggestions on what we should cover next. And is there a comprehensive history of the Byzantine church you could recommend, you know, for, for the general reader? Okay, I'm going to surprise you here, Mark, and say, no, there isn't. When you select the Byzantine Empire, which covers almost the entirety of the Balkans and Asia Minor in Crusader Kings' 1066 start, Emperor Basilius Constantinos X comes up. The term Basilius is a Greek term, most commonly translated as monarch, ambiguously referring to either kings or emperors. And this is historically accurate that they would call themselves this. More precisely, they referred to themselves as Basilius Romion in an effort to emphasise their own legitimacy as the real Roman Empire. You see, as we have covered in previous videos, after the Frankish ruler Charlemagne had become monarch of several important European kingdoms in the 8th century, in the year 800 he was proclaimed Roman Emperor by the Pope, which damaged diplomatic relations between the Franks and the Byzantines. This was resolved in 812 by the Byzantines agreeing to call the Frankish ruler Basilius but putting additional emphasis on themselves as the Roman emperors by using the term Basilius Romeon. So we can clearly see that the Byzantine Empire saw themselves as the direct descendants of the Roman emperors, even calling their empire the Roman Empire. And it was not just the rulers who were convinced of this, even the citizens of the empire referred to their state as the Roman Empire and to themselves as Romans. This was despite the fact that they were not actually speaking Latin and were culturally quite different to ancient Rome. Speaking of culture, many historically interested players of Crusader Kings 3 are unhappy about the cultural representation of the Byzantine Empire in-game. The Byzantine Empire in the 11th century was home to a large variety of peoples, including Khazars, Bulgars, Turks, Armenians, Slavs, Goths, Arabs, Illyrians, Thracians, Assyrians and many other groups. Whilst the majority language was Greek in many parts of the 1066 Byzantine Empire, the Greek culture in the game is overrepresented, clearly exceeding the historical Greek-speaking lands by also including Crimea, Inner Anatolia, and even significant parts of southern Italy. The game paid lip service to the concept of cultural diversity in Anatolia and the Balkans by making largish parts of the empire Bulgarian and Armenian but it is just not true that these other areas were majority Greek speaking. On a slightly unrelated note for this video, I just had to check out that last Byzantine remnant in southern Italy that the game shows. Here you have an autonomous Greek count ruling an allegedly Greek population in 1066 Naples, 
While the representation of Naples as a culturally Greek county in 1066 is almost absurd, we took a closer look at its ruler, Count Sergius V of Napoli, who was actually a Duke of Naples from the Sergian dynasty which ruled as Dukes of Naples from 840 to 1139. The founder of this dynasty, Sergius I, who ruled the duchy from 840 to 864, was the son of a Byzantine patrician that was called Marino il Greco, so Marino the Greek, by the local population. So although the concepts of ethnicity and hereditary culture were at least as fluent in the 11th century as they are today, it is arguably not wrong of the paradox to portray this ruler as Greek. It is just a pity that they failed the much more historically unambiguous decision to make the famous medieval duchy of Napoli actually a duchy. So the top dog of the Byzantine Empire in 1066, as mentioned earlier, is Basilius Constantinos X of the Ducas dynasty. He is 60 years old in the game, which should be correct historically, since Byzantine scholars have noted that he died a year later, in 1067, at slightly over 60 years old. Looking at the Ducas dynasty tree, we can see that Constantinos is the first in the family to become Byzantine emperor, which is historically accurate, as from his family, only himself, his son Michael, and grandson Constantine ruled the Byzantine Empire. Constantinus's ancestors are not mentioned in any primary sources, but some historians have argued that he must have been the son of Andronikos Dukas, a nobleman who served as an important general during the reign of Basil II from 976 to 1025. In his younger years, Constantinos was described as a keen academic, avidly engaging in debates about philosophy, theology, and politics. He gained political influence through the marriage to his second wife, Eudokia, a member of an important noble family and niece of the powerful patriarch, Michael Kerolarius. Constantinos was chosen by his predecessor Isaac I as he was very popular with the Byzantine state bureaucracy, and during his reign he continued to appeal to the bureaucracy with his policies, which allowed him to reign in quite a stable way despite being unpopular with the general population whose taxes he had raised. The military didn't like him either, and there was an assassination attempt organised by some of his generals in 1061. Perhaps one of the motivations of the military to try to assassinate him was that by the end of Constantinos' reign, the Byzantine Empire had shrunk. He lost their last remaining strongholds in southern Italy to the Normans, the Armenian heartland and eastern Anatolia to the Seljuk Turks, and significant parts of the Balkans, including modern-day Belgrade, to the Hungarians. So it seems like whilst Constantinos was skillfully playing the game of internal politics by getting the powerful bureaucracy on his side, his foreign policy lacked vision and strength. The biggest issue with Crusader Kings' depiction of the Byzantine Empire is probably the way how Western European feudalism is used as the template of representing their system of governance, when in reality things worked very differently there. As mentioned before, the Byzantines did not place their existence in the feudal tradition of Western Europe, but rather saw themselves as a mere continuation of the ancient Roman Empire. Thus, it is inaccurate to say that under the Basilius, there was a feudal system of dukes and counts, we tried to figure out how Paradox came up with the duchies that are present in the game, and quickly found the source of confusion. In the high medieval Byzantine Empire, the Byzantines had changed their governmental system from the ancient Roman provinces to several smaller districts called themes, or fermata in Greek. These themes were administrative divisions ruled by military leadership sent by the Byzantine Emperor. They were established in the mid-7th century in the aftermath of the Slavic invasion of the Balkans and Muslim conquests of Eastern Anatolia, and were intended to better defend the empire. Their strong military and administrative character was also evident in the story of their creation. The first themes were created from the areas of encampment of the field armies of the East Roman army, and their names correspond to the military units that had existed in those areas. You can see on this map of the Anatolian themes from the 10th century that they match the alleged Byzantine duchies in the game. It would be greatly appreciated if someone in the comments can correct my pronunciation coming up, 
So here we go. We've got Optimacoi, Opsikion, and Bulsalarians in the northwest of Anatolia. South of them, Thracians, Anatolic, and Sibiraeots. In the middle, we have Cappadocia, Carcianon, and Armeniac. And in the east, you have Sebastia, Chaldea, and Mesopotamia. I think I got the last one, maybe. Unfortunately, Paradox was clearly grasping at historical straws here, and completely misappropriated facts to fit their Eastern Roman duchy system. And if this inappropriate geographic representation was not enough, the Empire itself starts as a realm with the lowest possible crown authority, with the law Autonomous Vassals. So the vassals that did not even exist in this way can basically do whatever they want within the Empire. Just imagine that, commanders of legions in the Roman Empire or its Byzantine successor, legally fighting each other for land, while the Emperor is powerless to intervene. This is not to say that there was no similar system to feudalism in the Byzantine Empire. One of the biggest weaknesses of the early Eastern Roman Empire was its high degree of centralization, so the Emperors were smart to grant swathes of income and important titles to powerful patrician families or religious institutions in the Empire, in a system called Pronoia. However, these grants were not transferable or hereditary. So speaking in the legal terminology of the Byzantine Empire, Pronoia gave the grantee possession, not ownership, which remained strictly imperial. So if you compared the Byzantine Empire with the other famous European medieval empire, the Holy Roman Empire, the former clearly gave its ruler a much more centralized position of power than the latter, meaning the initial crown authority of the Byzantine Empire in CK3 should definitely be higher. While the duchy titles Paradox created were evidently flawed, they did try to make the most important vassals of Basilius Constantinos X important figures that actually existed. For instance, we have the Ecumenical Patriarchate, a kingdom title uniquely without any land in game, which is ruled by Ionis VIII. Ionis, or John as he would be called in English, was not only a theologian, but also an important jurist in the history of the Byzantine Empire. He is considered an innovator in the field of methodology of jurisprudential research. Then we have Du Ionis, the emperor's brother, who holds the two county fictional duchy of Optimotoi. In reality, he was given the title of Caesar by his brother, which was at that point used in the Byzantine system of government to make somebody the honorary second in command and Ionis also held significant de facto power as he was one of the most influential members of the court aristocracy from the death of his brother to when the dynasty retook the throne in the form of his nephew Michael. You see, the Duca's family lost their title of emperor for three years to Romanos of Anatolikon, who we will talk about in a bit. When Michael finally became Basilius, Ionis, as Caesar, even acted as de facto ruler for a short period, as Michael who we can see in the game as the current Emperor's oldest son, and who ruled the Empire as Michael VII, was seen as an incompetent and inexperienced ruler. Our last interesting character we need to mention is Du Romanos of Anatolikon. The game correctly has him as a member of the Diogenes family, and whilst it is probably true that his family is originally from Anatolikon, there are historical records that place him as an administrative ruler in Bulgaria in the 1060s. Romanos was a successful military general for Basilius Constantinos X, and the emperor's wife actually described him during his military years as not only surpassing others in his good qualities, but also being pleasant to look at in all respects. He seems to have been a real action hero, with one source claiming that in battle, he exposed himself to danger without a thought of the consequences. And after the old Constantinos died, the old emperor's widowed wife, Eudokia, who seems to have fancied the handsome daredevil for quite a while, married Romanos, which gave him the political legitimacy to successfully rise up to the title of Byzantine Emperor himself. He ruled for only three years until the Ducas dynasty, the family of his predecessor as Emperor, won back power, blinding Romanos and sending him to a monastery where he would soon die. If this isn't the perfect story for a Hollywood production set in the Byzantine Empire, I don't know what would be. Unfortunately, for many of the other powerful vassals in game, we could not find anything, such as 
Theodolus of Direkon in modern-day Albania, or Gregorius of Cappadocia, or Dragos Dragosevic, a Serbian vassal in the north of the empire. Perhaps these are all just fictitious. We understand that historical records for 1066, Asia Minor, and the Balkans are more blurry than in Western Europe, but we still hope that the Byzantine expansion the game developers have hinted at will correct the more problematic inaccuracies of this region in the game. We are excited for your input on the Byzantine Empire in 1066 Crusader Kings and its historical characters. Let us know in the comments what you would like to see improved about the East Roman Empire, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more history in bits. And, as mentioned before, we would love to dedicate more of our time to making these videos, so if you want to contribute any financial support for us to be able to do that, please consider supporting us on Patreon. See you next time!